Okay, hi everybody. <laughs> I'm here with Brian Ridgway and hello Brian. Hi. <laughs> hi. So you're known as the spellbreaker. Yeah. Okay, so let's talk about that then. So can you explain for people who don't know uh, what you do? Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> absolutely. Um, I help people to, this is very unusual and I'm sure we'll get into deeper questions to, mm -hmm. to yeah. uncover more of it. I help people to solve every problem in their life and it could be a disease they've had for decades, it could be a life-threatening disease, it could be money problems, business problems, relationship problems, anything that they consider to be a problem, I help them to dissolve it in a way that often if I sit down with someone who has experienced 30, 40 years of self-help, personal development, been to all the seminars, all the courses, all the programs and their problem is still in place. They sit down with me for 15 minutes to an hour and at the end it just literally disappears. Even diseases like scoliosis, cancer just disappears mm -hmm. um, because I go straight to the root and that, that's what I call spell breaking is where we're actually energy like we're all learning, we're all energy, right? But most of us aren't living like we're energy. We're, we, oh yeah, we're energy, we're energy, we're energy. And then we go out and live like we're physical. By showing people that they're truly energy, when they get that realization and it fully opens them, whatever they were holding as a problem just disappears. Mm -hmm. So I actually call it the illusion of problems. I help people release the illusion mm -hmm. of problems. Oh, okay. Could you explain like how you do that? How you're yeah. able to tap into that? Yeah, well, I if I have a really unusual story, and I really I can't even explain what I do without the story. So I can squish it down, pretty small. I had a really a life of hell. Like the first forty six years of my life mm -hmm. were tremendous suffering. I had I was severely abused as a child, mentally, emotionally, and physically for the first sixteen years of my life. Every single day, mm -hmm. I got the crap beat out of me, <laughs> mm -hmm. basically. And emotionally, I was told I was a stupid, ugly, worthless piece of crap. Like, it was, it was chronic. So I, as many people that come up with any type of, uh, of abuse, I came up with really low self-esteem. I also, though, I tested as a genius at a very, very early age, and I found out when I was around two or three years old, I didn't have any understanding of it, but I could look at someone and within a minute or two, I knew how they were holding themselves back. Now imagine being two or three. You have no vocabulary to explain mm -hmm. it. But my parents, my parents' friends that would come over, we'd be out you know, in the world doing things, and I could look at someone and just literally see how they were holding themselves back. And mm -hmm. I could say it to them mm -hmm. <laughs> at that age. And I freaked my parents out. I freaked mm -hmm. the neighbors out. Everybody freaked out. Um, what I found out over the years was that I can see the energy. I can actually see, Farah, that you are actually a perfect, complete, unlimited being of energy with no flaws, no faults, no wrongs, nothing bad. Mm -hmm. And that all the things you believe about yourself are just programming. Mm -hmm. Parental, religious, cultural, the geographical area you live in, medical, governmental, educational. Mm -hmm. I don't see any of that. I just see the perfect infinite being. Mm -hmm. And so somehow, often just by me sitting with someone talking, we don't even have to talk about their problems. Mm -hmm. They'll feel something's happening here. Mm -hmm. It happens. Um, so it's a gift and it's something that I've spent 40 years practicing. Mm -hmm. And what I'm really doing is I'm being a mirror for them of the fact that they're actually perfect energy. And by me not believing any of their stuff, they feel themselves not believing it anymore. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And when you don't believe you have a problem, your problem can't stick. Mm -hmm. Okay. So would you say it's like clairvoyancy or how would you describe it? Yeah, that is a word that a lot of people would use. And this is something that's in a world where everybody believes that we're physical meat suits mm -hmm. in a giant machine. But that's not true. We're actually infinite energy in an infinite ocean of limitless energy. Most of our language is totally screwed up. It's inaccurate. It points to things that don't exist. And so we have so many words like that. What I would say is poetically, I'm a mirror of the fact that you're perfect. As far as clairvoyance or, or, or seeing auras or whatever, I live in that world of perfection and energy so that's all I see mm -hmm. 
So although I don't really see the future and I don't really read minds, I can just see what mm -hmm. you believe. And, and I don't think there's really in our in English or in Scottish, <laughs> I don't think there really are words for it. So I find myself often uh, kind of creating a new mm. vocabulary. Okay. And if we use a word that points to something we think we know, like the word God, I love Eckhart Tolle talks about this. If we use the word God, the person doesn't hear what we mean. They hear what they think that word yeah. means. Yeah. So yeah, sometimes we actually have to either create new words or use phrases to replace a word. Yeah. I want to 